here in the back car talking to you via microphone. It's hard to talk to three coaches at once, so this is the way we do this here. So we're going to be navigating our way out through the old rail yards of the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railway on our way out to the Naog Gorge, which is just at the edge of the city limits here. Just a quick bit of history on our railroad here. This railroad was founded in 1851 by George and Selden Scranton. They are the brothers for which the city of Scranton has got its name. They owned an iron mill right here in town, and they were producing iron rails that were being sold to the then under construction Erie Railroad. The problem was the construction site was kind of a ways away, so they built their own railroads. Our engine up front is a diesel locomotive. It's a GP9, built by General Motors Electromotive Division in 1958. We just call it number 514. It originally ran on the New York, Chicago, and St. Louis Railroad, also known as the Nickel Plate Road. Their black and white paint scheme makes the thing remind me of a giant bumblebee. Just a quick word on direction here. I'm going to be telling you guys to look to the right or left. So just so you know what, you, what I mean by right and left, at the section of the, the part of the train that has the locomotive on it is going to be the front. The part where you boarded is the back. So when I say left or right, it's going to be based off of that orientation. So looking to the right currently, we are going past our locomotive shop. That is the oldest building on the uh, uh, property here. It was constructed in 1865, right at the end of the Civil War, and was capable of doing complete down-to-the-frame rebuilds of steam locomotives uh, of that era. At the turn of the century, steam engines got too big for that shop, so they had to construct a new heavy erecting shop, but it was still used as a machine shop, and it is still used as so today. If you look up to the left side, just coming into view, was going to be an elevated walkway. This leads people up to the mall at Steam Town today, but that, that's a modern uh, building here. What I want to point out is underneath it, those concrete sleepers or foundations that sit below the uh, elevated walkway. Those are left over from the old coal trestle that at one time uh, stood at that location. In real running terms, a trestle is essentially a long wooden bridge. And this long wooden bridge started down here at a concrete ramp, which we were about to pass, and then ran up to the far end of where those foundations are. It was a giant ramp, and they would push uh, coal cars up that ramp until it hit the end. If you didn't get a good look at it the first time by, we will be going past Bridge 60 Tower again. It will be on the right. If the building looks in really good condition, that's because it is still used today. It is the dispatching office for our freight railroad that still operates through here today, the Delaware Lackawanna Freight Railroad. Also, not to be confused with the historic Delaware Lackawanna and Western. They are a, uh, a short line freight railroad that carries uh, various different freight cargoes from the Norfolk Southern Taylor Yard, just south of here, up to various customers along the 62-mile Pocono Main Line. The majority of what they ship is lumber and grain. I think we're probably going to see some of their hard freight cars along this route today. Climbing the gentle hill coming out of uh, the Scranton Yards, we're on what today serves as more or less the main line. Historically, the main line was navigated quite, was situated quite a bit to the left of us. The mall at Steamtown is off to our left today. That was built on the footprint of the old classification yards that were once here. So this was basically an endless field of uh, railroad tracks going from here almost all the way over to Lackawanna Avenue. 
But like I said, we are running out of coal centers. So this was ideal for home heating during the 19th century. If you think about the image of the old 19th century potbelly coal stove, this is the type of coal that they would use. And right here, you're sitting on the largest deposit of it in the world. So they needed miners. And in the 19th century, there were miners. on the left very shortly is going to be one of the buildings of the University of Scranton. It's an old brownstone mansion that actually did belong to one of the family members of the Scranton family. It wasn't George or Selden, one of their uh, one of their descendants, I believe, is today part of the University of Scranton. I think it's their admissions office, but it was originally a mansion for the Scranton family. names here for Scranton. Western merged with their hated rival, the Erie Railroad, in 1960, creating the Erie Lackawanna Railway. And that actually helped them wet, uh, weather the loss of the coal mines pretty well. They were much more stable than many of the other railroads in this area. And then in the early 70s, pretty much all the railroads in the Northeast United States went bankrupt, all at the same time in USA. It had been founded back in the late 50s, early 60s by a guy with lots of time and money on his hands named F. Nelson Blount. He loved trains and he bought every single one he could get his hands on. He ironically died in a plane crash in 1967, but the museum kept going on without him up until the 80s when they were having a very hard time staying afloat. They needed a new home. Scranton had a giant abandoned rail yard. So they petitioned uh, Steamtown to come down here to Scranton and set up their tourist operation here, which they did in 1984. Pretty much all of the historic equipment that you see here today, these old locomotives such as number 15 going right past us here, uh, running number 2124, even the big boy, were all moved here as part of the Steamtown collection in 1984. They operated for a couple seasons and then they too went back. It was at that moment that a uh, local congressman, Joseph McDade, petitioned to have the entire site included into the National Park Service, which it was in 1986, and we were established as Steamtown National Historic Site with a combined resource of the historic Steamtown collection.